On February 14, 1990, more than 30 years ago, yes, parents, I'm sorry to say that 1990 was three whole decades ago, the space probe Voyager 1 had concluded its primary mission, and at the suggestion of the late world-renowned astronomer Carl Sagan, began to turn its cameras back towards Earth to take a picture. When Sagan initially proposed the idea to NASA to take a picture of Earth from the far reaches of the solar system, he received a lot of pushback, so much so that the image was almost never taken. There were fears that turning the spacecraft's cameras back towards the sun and back towards the rest of the solar system would irreparably damage them, all for a photograph that would, one, likely be too grainy to make anything out of, and two, likely lack any scientific value. And so because of those factors, it took 10 years and a last minute intervention by the NASA administrator to make sure that we took that image and that we captured ourselves. As we were, as we are today, and as we will always be, as a small stage in a vast cosmic arena, in Sagan's words. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the image right now if you've never seen it, but I can try to paint you a mental image of sorts. When you first glance at the picture, it doesn't hit you as anything special. You probably wouldn't even really know what you were looking at. But the first thing you would notice would be two washed out streaks of color lying in parallel on top of a vast black canvas. Within one of those streaks is a dot, a dot that if you tilt your head and squint really hard, you'd notice was sort of palish blue in color. Here's a little perspective on the size of this pale blue dot. The entire image that Voyager captured that day was made up of 640,000 pixels. And of those 640,000 pixels, that pale blue dot, which you can probably guess by now is Earth, was one-tenth of one pixel wide. One-tenth of one pixel. That's what we are. That's what everything that we've ever known is. Now parents, teachers, fellow graduates, and antsy younger siblings of fellow graduates, I know this all may seem random and arbitrary, so let me get right to why any of this matters to us here tonight. As far as we know, we're the only living creatures in the universe that are aware of our own existence. And inherent in that characteristic is a constant struggle with what it means to be here together on this earth and in this moment. Last week, on Monday, May 25th, George Floyd was brutally murdered in broad daylight. He was not the first black American to be killed unnecessarily at the hands of police, and he likely, unfortunately, will not be the last. Rather, George Floyd's heinous death is part of a larger story, a history of institutionalized racism and systemic oppression in the United States against people of color and especially against black Americans. And although we rightfully have a great deal to be proud of as Americans, we must not overlook the fact that the foundations of the United States were laid in the genocide of an entire continent of indigenous people. And we must not overlook the fact that this country was largely built on the backs of slaves for hundreds of years. And we must not overlook the fact that it was only 55 years ago on Bloody Sunday that m countless black Americans were mercilessly beaten just for having the audacity to ask to be treated a little better and to be afforded the civil rights to which they were entitled to as human beings. And while we are not personally accountable for the actions of those who have come before us, each and every one of us does bear a personal responsibility for the world in which we leave our children. 
Over these past 10 days, outraged Americans of all races, ethnicities, and backgrounds have taken to the streets in solidarity and exercised their constitutional right to assemble and protest in an effort to better their pale blue dot. And although in some cases, law enforcement officers have commendably heard, empathized with, and even shared in the concerns of protesters, for example, marching with them and locking arms with them in Camden, New Jersey, and in Flint, Michigan, still, in far too many cases, they have met protesters with absolutely unacceptable displays of gruesome violence, flagrant misconduct, and excessive force. Why does this keep happening? Why does history keep repeating itself like this? Because fundamentally, nothing will get better in this world until those who are unaffected by oppression, those in power and those in privilege, choose to be as outraged about injustice as those who are directly affected. And while we are here to rightfully celebrate the culmination of over 12 years of hard work, I come to you today with a plea. A plea that we not forget the untold number of slain Americans who will not make it to their graduations or back home to their loved ones or to the wonderful futures that were awaiting them. A plea that we work together to actively honor their legacy through institutional reform, honest introspection, anti-racism, and most of all, unending love for one another, even and especially in the face of those who swear by bigotry and hate. Because at the end of the day, it's on each and every one of us to make sure that that one-tenth of one pixel that we get to call home exemplifies the best of humanity. Ingenuity, perseverance, empathy, kindness, and love. And so with that, I'd like to share a poem with you. A poem written by Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, one of the fathers of the modern civil rights movement and one of the principal mentors to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, I did not choose it, but I know that I must use it, give account if I abuse it, suffer if I lose it. Only a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Families, educators, teachers, fellow graduates. Today in each day going forward, we all have a choice to make. Will we stand idly by, fully complicit in the modern day lynchings of innocent human beings? Or will we instead choose to have the moral courage to actively rise up in defense of black lives and in defense of every other life that has ever been marginalized, ignored, and treated as less than on our pale blue dot. It is my sincere hope that we all make the right choice. Thank you.